Hello everyone and welcome back. So I gave you that long equation last time which looked something like this. And what it did was it said, okay, we can figure out the diffusion coefficient at one temperature given the diffusion coefficient at the previous temperature and some other data. Now, in some of your problems, you might be given both diffusion coefficients and have to solve for the activation energy or both diffusion coefficients and the activation energy and have to solve for temperature. So you're going to probably have to use a lot of different um, combinations of this equation. So make sure you write it down. It's going to be important. So let's look at this and see if we can solve. It says at 300 degrees Celsius, the diffusion coefficient and activation energy for copper in silicon are 7.8 times 10 to the negative 11 meters squared per second and 41.5 kilojoules per mole. And what is the, sorry, the diffusion coefficient at 350 degrees Celsius? First off, these temperatures are always absolute. It means Kelvin and only Kelvin, or Rankine, though that's going to be really, really rare. Never ever Celsius. So these two temperatures are going to have to be converted. The way you do that is you simply add 273. Temperature in Kelvin is equal to the temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273. So we do that. We get 573 for one and 623 for the other. Then we plug in our values. And it's really just that simple. Another thing to be careful about is one, make sure that your value for the universal gas constant is the one that has joules in it. And two, this says kilojoule per mole, so make sure that you convert that to regular old joules. And I get my D2 is equal to 15.7 times 10 to the negative 11 meters squared per second. And that's it. That wasn't terrible, was it? Now things get a little bit more crazy if you're trying to solve for a temperature, solve for the activation energy, but it, it's still not bad. Um, other things to remember is if you're trying to get rid of this exponential and solve for activation energy, you need to take the natural log of it. Because log of an exponential, oh sorry, let me write this correctly, a log of an exponential of x, let's say, is going to be equal to x. Whatever you had there, whatever inside the exponential will just pop out when you take the natural log of it. So that's a helpful hit there. But with that, we're done with this problem, so thanks for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.